Hi, I'm Ross Dawson, a futurist uh, based in Australia, together with uh, Gerd Leonard, another futurist based in Switzerland. Yeah. And um, having a series of conversations, and today's looking at uh, Twitter. And so, Gerd, you've used the phrase TNN for Twitter News Network. So what does that mean? Is that the future? It's actually not for me. I think it's from Jeff Jarvis, a uh, television critic, a uh, television author and, and, uh, and um, writer. Um, I think the idea of Twitter News Network is to say what we're seeing on Twitter right now is that it will take about 40 seconds for any news to be broadcasted and sent out via Twitter. For example, the Osama death uh, was tweeted within 26 seconds and it took about 40 minutes for the first television coverage, right? So what we're seeing now is that Twitter, the speed of news is like increased tremendously. And this is why I say Twitter News Network is a pretty good uh, description of the future, which to me, uh, I think TNN will be bigger than CNN. Uh, in fact, we're going to have video and audio uh, on Twitter, right? so we can watch TV through Twitter, uh, produced by the masses, and with a completely unclear relationship of who owns what and why, and who is controlling the quality and the verification, which of course in, in television was a, um, that was all sort of a fig leaf anyway, because we didn't know it was true just because Fox News was broadcasting it, <laughs> didn't mean it was true, right? So we had the same problem in television that we have on Twitter. It's interesting. I mean, just just to the point about uh, integrating the, the video and audio. Uh, in China, Twitter is blocked, but they have Sina Weibo, which is basically as big as Twitter. And one of the things, the very interesting distinction with Sina Weibo is that it, it does include uh, video and audio put uh, in the stream. So it is becoming more of that news channel than Twitter is currently. So it'll be very interesting to see if Twitter takes that on. Clearly, one of the biggest differences between uh, TNN and CNN is that filtering. Mm -hmm. When you, something appears on CNN, you know that some person who presumably has had some training and uh, responsibility has made a choice to put that uh, up for everybody. Whereas on Twitter, there are people who are not only untrained, but also may uh, even have some be trying to mislead. So uh, it's interesting. I think there's, we, we will abs in this, I believe, this is the decade of the reputation economy where more and more we'll have the reputation mechanisms to assess whether particular tweets or news or reports or videos, whatever, are worthy of paying attention to. Though it's, whilst we've always had to do that, I think, you know, absolutely, as individuals, we have to be, have a far, far more finely tuned senses as to what is um, worth paying attention to. And if we want earlier news, then we go to Twitter with that understanding that we have to filter and make sense of that and be possibly misled along the way. Yeah, I think this is a difficult question because clearly the fact that mass mediums were mass uh, mass financed and, and, and uh, channeled through cable, which was expensive to have, didn't mean it was any more accurate. I mean, look at weapons of mass destruction. Now, it didn't exist, right? We all thought it did, but, you know, we started a war over it, but never mind. It wasn't real, right? So, are we then going to say just because Twitter is free and cheap, you know, is it less, any less accurate? I don't think so. I think the biggest problem and the biggest distinction really is that Twitter is like a river, like an ocean of yes. stuff, right? And CNN is like a, a, a droplet, right? And, and so that's for, it's manageable, right? And we yes. tend to be, yes. believe that it's better for that. So I think if Twitter can solve this problem, how to take this river and cut it down to the kernels of truth and wisdom, you know, then I am for Twitter. But yeah. that's not Twitter's role. I mean, so far it hasn't. I mean, while Twitter is taking more and more of the ecosystem, right. that is in fact the role of the that you know those around Twitter to be able to take it as and make sense of that. So, uh, but this is why we have Flipboard and other things. Yes, you know, exactly. To and take that, to take the filtering process. This, this is the big opportunity for Twitter and, and is I'm, to generate yeah, this. Absolutely. Right? And I and I in fact I've got a venture. Uh, our, our companies have got a venture in this space as well, basically Twitter filtering to be able to mm -hmm. pull out the most uh, reliable around a particular theme. And there's other ones around that, uh, Paperly, Twitter Times, uh, Genio, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so on, which are all trying to take that and make sense of it. Um, though I, I, to be frank, I think we're pretty early on in terms of that, as you say, taking that ocean into distilling that into meaningful droplets. But I mean, we have similar situations, for example, TripAdvisor, or Wikipedia, where we're saying, okay, is the wisdom of the masses, is that true? It's just bullshit of the masses? <laughs> you know, I think, of course, it's both. But, but I mean, if you look at, for example, on TripAdvisor, like 95% of these comments are actually quite on the money when you get there. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's because there is a filtering process, there is authenticity, there is review, yeah. there is verification. Right? Yeah. And that has to be part of Twitter as well. And verification of Twitter is now how many times you've been retweeted. 
and, and those kind of things. But there is a long way to go to verify this. The, the, um, in a way, it's the Twitter should be providing the ocean. And yeah, Twitter as well, or others as well, can provide some of those filtering mechanisms. But we all want to get our own slice out of that, or our own droplet, yeah. still our own droplet out. It's not the same droplet for everyone. So they, they still need to give us access to that unfettered ocean. Interestingly, whilst uh, one of uh, Twitter's big uh, revenue mechanism now is charging for its uh, the, the the fire um, the fire hose of all Twitter streams, you actually still can get two percent of all Twitter streams for free, mm -hmm. and uh, it's called the spritzer, I think. Yeah, I think that we you know the future basically means that we're going to have a combination of the sort of broadcast medium, which is centralized and, and, and yep. top down, and the broadband medium. We have yes. actually both. Uh, and the combination of broadcast and broadband is where the interesting stuff will happen in the future. It's not either or, as we discussed in the previous show, right? Yeah. It's not black or white. We need broadcast. We need broadband. But just the broadcast medium, in my view, has not been sufficient, really, uh, to actually express what, yeah. what could be happening, right? So the combination of the two, and this is why, of course, CNN is a heavy Twitter user, yes, for absolutely. example, right? And actually promoting Twitter, Skype, YouTube, and all that on, on the air, right? So the combination of the two is where it's going. I recently wrote a uh, post saying, you know, seven reasons why Twitter is central to my life. And there's a lot of reasons why. One, in fact, people often surprise me. As a futurist, I always get asked, you know, how do you keep on top of all the information out there? How do you, you find what's really useful? And when I say Twitter is my primary information source, a lot of people are surprised because they don't understand how Twitter works. So Twitter is both an information source and it really is central to my life. So I, I certainly see that as a you know, big chart of my life, my information sources, my way of finding information, and, and uh, I'm sure you, it's the case for you as well. Yeah, maybe a quick message for people out there watching this. I think the most important part is you can't talk about uh, uh, swimming if you don't want to get wet. You know? So you, you, it's very hard to talk about stuff like Twitter or if you're not actually inside. So the way to find out what it does is to try it. And the same goes for Facebook. And, and all the other tools there. Uh, and that's how you find out what it can do for you. And this is a good part of it because you have to actually get inside. Right? So this has uh, been a quick uh, conversation on Twitter and its role in the news and future. So on Twitter, I'm Ross Dawson. And I'm G. Leonhard, G-L-E-O-N-H-A-R-D. Otherwise, just Google GERD, G-E-R-D, and Futurist, and you'll find, uh, I don't know, 50 million, no, just kidding, 250,000 links or whatever, you can spend your weekend uh, uh, poking around in my tweets. <laughs>